if you were to look into the future, my last question to you, if you were to look into the future as an elder, what would be, what would you like to see, what would you like to make sure? It's interesting. I, in some ways, don't look into the future. Mm -hmm. I did. I mean, Len and I had this mutual dream that what, whatever it was we were bringing into the world, that it would, it would have an organic um, life. Mm. And also I realized it would die someday, like everything. It would, and then it would be reborn in some way. Mm. Um, so I've had a vision about quote, this work or this vision, and it's happening. It's, I meet people now who study with someone, who study with someone, whatever, and we have something in common. I would love, obviously, for the world to be more peaceful and people to be more, whatever, more alive. But I realize that's not my responsibility, and I have Whatever I envision, I'll either be disappointed or I'll feel, <laughs> oh, I told you so, kind of thing. And I, I, I kind of let go. Mm -hmm. I think because I was so ill and I thought I had no future, mm -hmm. I let it go. And what did the illness teach you? To be present, mm -hmm. actually. It taught me a lot of very specific things also, how to regenerate a nervous system. I mean, I learned. And how would you say to regenerate a nervous system? By doing it. By doing it, meaning I, what? Uh, by, well, I, it's not a word thing. It's a process thing. Okay, but just in terms of process, kinesthetically, can you just give us an idea of that? If, if someone has a somatic nerve, skeletal muscular nerve difficulty, it's not that hard, actually, to regenerate. Although, um, this is something that you're very, very aware of with your work with spinal cord injuries and other kind of injuries. Um, and Christopher Reeve, at least through other means, proved that it's possible in ways that other people can believe because they did it or something they could measure on a machine or something. If it's a sympathetic nerve, you have to rest, and that's known. If it's a parasympathetic problem, you can't rest. You're really sick, and it's chronic because mm -hmm. the very system through which you heal is injured. And yes. that's where I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a very long, long-term process, but it can happen. I can't say it in words, but it, would, it goes, it, it, someone has to go way really deep into the dark. So many healing practices are find the light. This is really going into the dark. You know, I just, uh, uh, I've been working in the dark for several years now because I do feel that that is the gestating mm -hmm cloister in a certain way and it's so interesting to hear you say that of the but that uh, that ability to be able to and it's so interesting to hear you say the issue of the the parasitic the parasympathetic being the the um uh, that's the problem and if uh, it's uh peter kingsley return uh, speaks of incubation have you mm -hmm. ever listened to him you know who he is Oh, he's a Sufi uh, writer. But anyway, he speaks about incubation. And I go back to Asclepius and the, I don't know if you've ever heard of I'm a very poor reader. But anyway, just to say hibernation, basically. The hibernating capability of sinking into the darkness where you're really at the cusp of where life and death meet. Mm -hmm. Would you say? And so the willingness to be present with that. It's the way through. I think it is too. Mm. Yeah. And what's so strange in one of my koans, 
is not really I don't meditate on that way on it but it's there in the back is the very place of the most incredible peace is what we avoid oh that's I I can't get better than that (laughs) (laughs) oh my god Ah, thank you. Whoa.